Okay, cool. So uh, what I'll do right now, Sean, before I can you know dive deep into what we do, how we do it, and all, all those boring stuff, right? I want to ask a few questions about, you know, how to understand where you are exactly right now, where you want to be, and to see if we can align ourselves in that process to bridge that gap possibly. Is that okay if I ask a few questions? Yeah. Good. So yeah, um, first of all, uh, Sean, like, you know, what, what would you say yes to this conversation? What was the thing that you felt like, you know what, let's, let's have a 20 minute call. Um, you know, of course I get calls like this all the time. Um, you know, different people selling products that are going to get us ads. Um, the main thing is when I was talking to the representative, we, we spoke about, I told him pretty much I'm not interested. Um, and then we talk about what, what the company does and how this is not necessarily a, a lead generation. Um, it's more about an appointment setting and, and setting up appointments for me to have calls with qualified buyers. Um, and so that intrigued me. And then also the fact that, you know, I have to do my job, but like, they spoke about, and it could have even been you guys spoke. I don't know who it was that spoke with. Okay. So, um, you know, like if I can't guarantee, if you can't guarantee me five qualified buyers a month, then I don't pay anything. So for me, it's like, what do I have to lose to give you a shot? If you feel so confident in your, in your model and your business um, strategy that if you can't produce at a certain level, right. then you don't, I don't have to pay you, then anyone who feels that confident in what they have going on, I figured I, I owe them at least 20, 30 minutes of my time to learn more about the system. Okay, cool. So, um, uh, the system that we use is com a combination of advertising and, uh, you know, follow up group campaigns and qualification process. So 70% of our work is qualification, uh, more than just generating uh, details of contact details, right? So the first part of the process is Facebook ads, Facebook and, you know, meta ads, Facebook and Instagram. And the way we have structured it is like there's two types of investment from your side. One is an investment on your business. That is, you know, the Facebook advertising. You have to take care of that ad budget, daily ad budget, if you want to, you know, move ahead with the system. But there is a separate thing that we, you know, the service delivery that we take care of, the service fee to our agency, that is not, you know, you don't have to just, you know, pay us that to get started unless you, you know, see results coming in from here. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Is that okay with you? Um, I mean, I guess it depends on like what what is the typical Facebook ad budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I'll go into that. Like I'll share with you the. It starts from twenty dollars a day. That's what we you know suggest uh, starting with as a, as bare minimum, so that we can get enough inflow to give you the results that you're looking for. And you know, from there, after one month, two months in, you see a good positive ROI. From there, we can you know move forward and you know, increase the budget if required. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. So you're saying an ad budget of a minimum of about six hundred dollars a month. That's a daily budget. So before the month ends, we you know we'll be, I'll be talking about that as well. We'll be guaranteeing applications to you, a number of applications for the first month in a trial period. So you have to tell us that okay, these applications meet your standards. How qualified are they as compared to referrals and stuff like that, which you're already doing? I'm guessing use referrals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then so, again, uh, use referrals. That was the question. Yeah, what was the biggest source of Yes, capital? of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so, so my biggest, so I'm, I'm probably, uh, almost a hundred percent referrals right now. And that's a model that I don't think is in this industry. You need to be diversified in that all your leads are not a hundred percent referrals. Um, so I do want to have some organic social media, uh, whether they're coming from, um, things that I'm doing as far as videos or things of that nature. Um, but you, I do need some of that extra leads that are coming in that are not from my sphere of influence. Um, so organic social media, does that add, you know, flow to you? Like, you know, a home buyer is coming in from that side as well. Mm -hmm. From organic social. Are you asking, do I already have that? Yeah. But like, do you already have something in place or do you wish? No, to I don't. Okay. Yeah. I don't have anything in place. Currently. Okay. But you are open to that idea. Correct. Okay. So, um, what's the structure looking like right now? I mean, how many loans you're doing right now? How many applications coming in? You said major leads referrals. So can you help me understand that? Yeah, I'm closing about 10 a month. Um, and then as far as applications, the applications are down now, but you know, it goes, I'd say on average, I'm doing about, um, three a day. Um, so, but that, that's just an average. You know, 
Some of them are, are good leads. Some of them are not good leads. I have a couple of different referral partners that deal with uh, individuals who are credit challenged and they need someone to help guide them through the process. Um, so that's why I think those numbers are a little skewed. If you, if I had to guess qualified actual bars, I'm probably getting about one and a half leads a day and closing, uh, 10 a month. 10 a month. Okay. So, um, three a day in applications you say, right? That's like almost about, uh, let's say 60, 60, 70 applications a month. That's what you're doing. That's yeah. 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 The application. So. That's a, that's a good number. Do you think that's a good number or do you think there is something more that you would ideally like to hit? Yeah, I don't necessarily think that it's, uh, I need more applications. I don't think I have an application number problem. It's a type of application. So like those ones that are unqualified buyers that, um, like I don't necessarily want to get rid of those. Um, mm -hmm. just believe, I believe in community and helping those people and guiding them and giving them information. But like I can't, I would rather pass it off and hire someone else and take care of that funnel. Um, and okay. work on a different funnel of business. So it sounds like you don't have a flow problem. It sounds like you have, you want to save more time and convert more people from what's already coming your way. Correct. Okay. And, and, and you know, like 60, 70 applications and 10 loans a month. What does the other 50, 60 doesn't have that doesn't convert to loans? Like what do you see usually happens? Uh, what are the reasons why they won't get a loan? Is it from their side um, or? Credit Oh yeah, it would be on the, the borrow side. They're just not ready. Okay. And then some of them, you know, like, so it's, it's a mix. So you have probably, uh, 30 to 40% of those where, you know, I have this one referral partner, like I said, he's giving me people. And before I, I started taking on his leads, I knew that a lot of them aren't qualified. And it's more of a, just a quick check to see where they're at in the process and what we need to do. So you have some of those and then you have some where you just lose. Um, you know, they, they're, they're, great shopping and then they end up, they may go with an online lender or something, but I'm not an online lender. Like I'm in a brick and mortar um, business. And so, um, you know, I have an extra expense. So like sometimes rocket mortgage or whatever people, they may go there because the rates are better. I be different places like that. Um, so that's going to be some of them. And then some of them it's inventory where they just can't find a house. They're still in my funnel, uh, but they just can't find a house that suits their needs. Um, so I'd say that's the, the three that's main, uh, yeah. So in this three main, like, uh, it seems like the people who are not qualified, like you cannot help them anyways. And the people who yeah. are not able to find uh, inventory, the, the solution probably is to connect them with realtors. Is that the, is that the probable next step? Yeah. And a lot of those are already coming from realtors. Like the realtors will be like, Hey, can you get them pre-approved for me? Um, okay. so go look at some homes, but then the realtor is unsuccessful in finding something within the market. Okay. So like pretty much the only thing, if you can increase the conver conversion, it seems like the middle middle portion, right, where they are not moving forward with you. They are ready to move forward. That's the only chunk that you want to increase into loans. That can be something we can focus on, right? Yeah, and so also I, I think market. So like what we're talking about, so like a lot of stuff I'm talking about is within a smaller market um, because it's coming, like I said, almost 100% is coming from referrals. So I have um, referral partners that are within the community that I'm in, in a, in a, you know, in a 25 to 45 mile radius. Um, you know, that's where the book of business is coming from. I would like to expand outside of that. And I think that that's going to help, um, you know, because for example, I'm licensing to get some money life in two states. So I'm licensing in Virginia and West Virginia. So like my, I've done one in West Virginia. I'd like to do more, I'd like to get more business out of that area. And the outside of my current market area, I'd like to pull in more business outside of my current market, um, market area that's still within the states that I'm licensing. Okay. Okay, so I'm confused here. Can you help me with something? There's two things that you've mentioned, right? Which is very important. Both of these are like different types of services, right? Uh, that's required to make it work. One is like you said, uh, the flow is not a problem. You're getting enough applications, which is a lot, right? 60, 70 is not a small number. Uh, if you can increase the conversion from there, from what's already coming in from this area, that's one thing that you mentioned. And second is, uh, you also said, I want to bring people more from outside the area that I have, you know, I'm working from outside the community. Mm -hmm. So which one is it more priority for you? Like if you had to choose one, uh, bring in more from the outside, bring in more from the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't so, mean, so I'm talking, it's a small radius. So like, I'm, I'm still not talking about going hundreds of miles, hundreds of mile radius still within. So like I live in, you know, this Blacksburg, Virginia. And so in Blacksburg, Virginia, um, it's a community, it's a college town where a university is at. So it's densely populated, but it's a small area, very small area. So then you have lots of little towns surrounding it. And I want to go out into those other markets, 
Um, these are still drivable markets. These aren't, I'm not talking about expanding out beyond drivable markets, still within those same markets. And I think that that's, if I can start to build a presence in those areas, um, that's going to generate more leads, more qualified leads. Because like I said, a lot of those leads that I say aren't good leads that I can't close, they're coming from an individual who runs a company who is his, his thing is he goes out and he's advertising for those type of buyers, the buyers that no one else will help. Um, and so he's bringing them in. So I would like to not necessarily get away from his business, but pass his business off to a teammate uh, who I'm trying to bring into the business who has more time to concentrate on those. In the meantime, I'm going to expand outside of our small community um, and then try to convert more of those leads. Okay. So it's like both of these in different scenarios, that's what you want to, you know, slowly capture moving forward. Okay. Yes. That makes sense. And how is it like you, you, you're doing like 10 loans a month. Is there a number of loans that you want to add on top of it or just whatever you share? That's, that's however it happens. Yeah. No, I would, ideally I would like to do, uh, is five more loans a month. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. So if I could do 15, that I think that would make my world and my company go around a lot better. How so? Like, you know, what, what impact does it bring to you if I can ask? You figure, you, yeah, yeah. So if you, sorry, we have another call. So if I have the five more loans, you figure, you know, the average loan size in my market area is only 250,000. Um, so you're adding that, that more into your, um, you're adding five more loans at $250,000 per loan. That allows me to have an income, uh, such that now, so currently it's me, I have an assistant, um, and I have a processor. I would like to build my team. I mean, the only way I can build my team out is I have to have a wider funnel. Um, okay. and so just getting to 15 is going to put me at a level to where I feel confident enough because the, the way it works is my company that I work, so I work for a company is that if I want to hire an assistant, they don't have the capacity. They'll still get benefits and things of that nature. But as far as the pay, it's up to me to guarantee their mm -hmm. pay. Okay. Okay. So, so how urgent is it? Like, is it an imme immediate thing that you want to hop on into or you are saying like, okay, I still have time. This is the goal, but I still have time to make sure that happens. Or you say as soon as possible, we can make that work. That would be insanely impactful. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as possible, I would say, to, and I guess to give you another backstory, the company I'm with, I've been here since October. Um, I was okay. hired on, uh, the, to run the branch. Um, there's currently a branch leader who is running the branch, which he's in the process of retiring. Um, and so during the time through the transition, um, I want to build up my team. So when she says she walks away, which she's walking away within the next 12 months. Um, so when that happens, I want to have my team in place, um, ready to go. And so they have in, empowered me to say, okay, go out. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. You, you broke off in between, um, you can hear me. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. I can see you. Okay. Hearing. Okay. Yeah, so you're saying? Uh, I was just saying that, you know, the, the current branch lead, I was brought on to um, run the branch. Uh, that transition, we're going to transition her out, transition me in, and I want to have my team in place. Uh, by the time that happens, and so she's, you know, we're we're getting ready to go to a, a process of uh, we're going to do a, a refi boom, and so she wants to stay for part of that, um, and then after that, she's walking away, and so I want to have my team in place. Uh, how long is that? Like, how, how much time do we have for that? Within twelve months. Within twelve months. Okay. Uh, all right. Cool. So you you need to make sure the team is everything is set in place, the systems is working before that happens. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, just before I can share the system that we are uh, you know using uh, for this Michigan client that we'll be using for you as well. Uh, can you like do you have any experience with Facebook ads before? Have you did it yourself or worked with someone before? No, not Facebook ads. No. And anyone you know who had experience is positive. I have a, a I have a couple of realtor partners. Um, they use Facebook ads. Um, so they're Latino um, agents, and so they use Facebook ads for to just get the word out in their market. Um, and it, it works extremely well for them. That's positive. Uh, yeah, yeah. Facebook and ads. I don't even think the the spend that you were referring to. I don't think their spend is anywhere remotely close to that. Um, but it seems to work well for them. But they're only going after. They're, they're branding themselves as the Latino um, real estate agents in Montague.
in a small market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, it depends on the audience, the structure. You know, how exactly mm -hmm. you are. What's the audience size? It makes depends on a lot of factors. Um, okay, so I'll share my screen with you. We'll go into some of the details here. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Let me see. It's this one. Okay. So. You know, most people who, you know, uh, have this, I have this conversation with, uh, shares two problems. Number one, now for you, both of the problems exist. So it's interesting. Someone says, you know, there's not enough flow. Others say there's enough flow, but conversions is what I'm struggling with. So the way we, you know, tackle this problem for, you know, the suggestion that we have for everyone is what I'm going to show you right now. First step of the process this is like, a, this is a funnel. Imagine this as like a funnel to, you know, filter out people and, the, by the end of the process, we give you enough people, like 15, 20 a month or 30 a month to speak with over a phone call or how, how do you do the consultations, by the way? Uh, they vary, but mostly I do them. So I, I do a phone conversation that leads <clears> them <throat> to an application, uh, to completing an application. And then we have another phone conversation. And if there are people within the community, we do uh, on site, you know, I have an office, they can come by the office and we can do a consultation there, but mostly it's by phone. Well, it's mostly by phone, right? So yeah. before they, you know, speak with you, we filter them out so much that they meet all the criteria that you're looking for, right? Yeah. So we increase the number of appointments of people who shows up to you so that the chances of you getting more applications from the areas that you want to target, as you said, outside of the region that you're working on right now, uh, we will make sure that we target Facebook, uh, with Facebook as we target those people from those areas. And make sure we have most most you know conversations happening with you uh, every day, right? So that is what our goal is. The first step is Facebook ads. We will uh, target this those areas, target the occupations, so that the income levels is higher. Uh, you know the the ideal criteria that you you suggest to us. Once that is done, there is gonna be like let's say hundred people sh raising their hands over a period of thirty days, right? The first thirty days. So what happens is not everyone is worth your time. You don't need to speak with everyone. We will be sending them, the people who raises their hand will be sending them to this questionnaire. Do you see this uh, questionnaire page? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this has like, you know, the basic questions that, uh, you know, we'll be customizing for you, which you want to be asked to them. Uh, questions like, you know, what's the estimated price of the home that you're looking for? It's going to be a survey based quiz. I'm sorry. Can, can I ask one question? So just so I don't forget, um, as we're going through this and you so, these people raise their hands, they are completing their survey, and then you're driving them to me. Do you and the other um, companies you, you've used this for, are they coming in where they already have representation as far as um, a real estate agent? Or are these loan officers then have any ability to double what they're doing by offering these leads um, to someone in their, in their sphere of realtors that may be able to help them out? That's a really good question. Um uh, let me just you know go through this, and this will give you more clarity about this, right? Uh, okay. I'll, I'll keep in note of this. So, what what do you prefer? Like, do you prefer people to already have representation, or do you, you know, anything is fine with you? You can make it work. Yeah, I mean, I guess if my personal preference is I do have people I work with, and if I could drive business with them as well, that's a plus. Um, okay. Because that 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 even solidifies our relationship, you know, and then even it may be. Uh, somebody that another agent who I want them to start sending me business as well. And, I, and that's one of the catches that I can say, hey, I can give you, you know, a couple of people per month or whatever, you know, and give you an opportunity to earn business. I can help grow your business as well. So that would be a plus to me as well. If I okay. have the ability to do that. Okay. That's, that's good. I'm glad you shared that with me. So, you know, in this questionnaire, the first question is, of course, the estimated price. Now we can customize these questions, the ranges. Second is what's the gross income before taxes. Now, mind you, like not everyone is going to be, you know, 100% uh, filling this up with full integrity. People can lie, right? And this is, no one's mm -hmm. checking that. But this is not to yeah. get the information, uh, you know, uh, but it's more so, so that we can make them jump through hoops before they reach you. So that the intention mm -hmm. level of going forward uh, is, is already checked. Does it make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the third question is like the credit score. What was the lowest that you can you you go with? Uh, we can do a five eighty. Five eighty. All right, five eighty. Yeah. Lowest. Okay, so you know, uh, at this stage, the credit score is going to be asked, and then the question that you asked, right? Do they already have representation? We also ask that question. Now, once once someone fills these uh, up, 
we have checked their intention level because not everyone who is scrolling to Facebook goes into a website, fills all the details up unless they are really committed to something, right? So they fill this information up and then they submit. And then we register them as one lead into the ecosystem. So far, does it give you some clarity? Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is well, I guess one thing. So that's a lead into that's not a lead to me necessarily. That you're saying that that's I guess my question is, is that is that just a lead that goes into the funnel or is that one of the five guaranteed leads that you get? No, no, no. It's far from there yet. I'll get okay, back. Gotcha. Because this is not this, this is still not worth your time. Right? Yeah. So what happens is like a hundred people coming in, fifty of them might be filling this up. So you cannot speak with fifty people. And most of them are still not, you know, there's no intention there. A lot of things has to be filtered out still. So now we register them as one lead inside the system, right? And this is our uh, CRM that we'll be using for you. And this is the high, you know, uh, client from Michigan that we have worked with for the last, last 10 months. And you see here 1,248 such leads that came in, but only 238 appointments was actually booked. It was scheduled, right? So now from the leads that registers, 30% of them actually books an appointment. So they take the next step to move towards you. Now, the way we book the appointments is there's two types of steps to do that. Number one is, let's say, Amanda Goodman. This is an example conversation. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. So once the lead is generated, it's registered inside the ecosystem. Uh, we send them, you know, emails on your behalf. Like here it says Samantha from. So we can send them like, you know, Sean from, what was the company that you're working with? And mortgage. Mortgage. So it's Sean from Mortgage and, you know, and there will be a link to your calendar. Do you use a Google Calendar or Calendly? I use a Google Calendar. Okay. So we will integrate the Google Calendar to this on the onboarding call. And then we will have like the calendar set up here. So what happens is it will look something like, like this. This is our calendar, let's say last week. So this is how the, you know, the appointments is going to show up uh, according to your schedule. And whenever someone books an appointment directly from, uh, from the conversations itself, that's a booked appointment already. But a lot of, not a lot of people will book directly from SMS and in emails. So what we will do is we'll call them up from our end as well. And like your VA, like your assistant, if you have an assistant who can take care of this, okay, but we still would like to do this from our end. And once we do that, that makes like, you know, even the people who doesn't necessarily book appointments, we still make sure the num number of appointments is increased. Are you still with me on this? Yeah. Okay. Now what happens is like we have took them from, you know, three steps closer to you, but still what happens is not just, just booked appointments doesn't make sense. You need to actually speak with them. So what we have seen for this Michigan client is with $20 ad budget a day, we were able to get 35 appointments booked, 25 to 35, depending on the months. So on average, 60% of them shows up to you. So that's 70 to 20 of people you can speak to. So if your referral lead is like referral prospect is like eight out of 10 for you or seven out of 10 for you, these people will be like, you know, six out of 10 for you. So we increase the number of six out of 10 you speak with every month so that the chances of you getting five applications really good quality increases. Does it make sense so far? Yes. Do you think this will be something that will help you achieve the goals that you are trying to achieve with, uh, you know, Outside your area. Yeah. Yeah. If you can talk to more, more borrowers, qualified borrowers that are engaged in the process, you have a better chance of converting. Okay. So this is what I would suggest for you to, you know, for the, uh, outside your community that you're talking about, right? To get more borrowers from there. And the, the conversion rates that you already having, you know, your, the application that's already coming in to increase the conversion rates. Uh, also in this, we'll be implementing that. But, uh, I wanted to ask you, you were talking about, organic social media, like videos and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So what we want is like, what we see is like, you know, when we spoke, when we see, speak with a prospect who is coming from a uh, referral source for you, right? The conversation is more warm. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah. So these people are like, no cold audience and never know you. They don't have a mutual point of contact. So to make them warm as well, we need to integrate videos from you into the process of the drip campaign. So that by the time they speak with you, they have already seen you multiple times virtually and you have already shared value to them. So the likelihood of them being as warm as the referral a prospect increases. Nothing can beat referrals, right? But you cannot consistently predict referral numbers. 
right? So what we would like from your side is now, if, you, if you're okay with videos, so we will include videos into the pipeline in the follow-up process so that the chances of you converting more people increases as well. So as far as the videos that would be included in a drip campaign, is this something where it like, would be scripted by you all or is just videos that I've scripted? Well, we will give you guidelines uh, based on the, you know, the psychology we know uh, works. And then from there, we would like you to have authentic communication with the people, right? Authenticity is what we would sell. Okay. You know, so we'll give you like, okay, this has to be there in this step and you make a video of that and we'll post process that from our end into the end of the campaign. Okay. You know, okay. So that's, that's pretty much it. What do you think? Do you think this is something that can potentially, you know, get to the level that you're trying to reach? Uh, uh, and so the, the idea behind it, so you're generating more engagement through Facebook ads. Um, you're generating more engagement through videos, and then you guys are doing the the work to scrub those and to actually have um, warm leads that are coming to me. So, like, yeah, the premise behind that sounds wonderful. Um, we, I would just have to see it in an application to see how it works. But yeah, I mean, theoretically, it sounds great. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think, from your point of view, if you can find out something of something that could go wrong in this, what would that be, from your point of view? Like, okay, everything sounds good, but what about this? Is there anything? Uh, there? I mean, Facebook. Um, so, like, Facebook, like, you know, my market, uh, am I going to be able to pull in? So, like, that get 1,200 and something, I don't know the time frame of those 1,200 or whatever leads they had. Um, are we going to be able to pull those kinds of numbers? Like, so in that study, and you say the lender in Michigan, what area, like, are they doing the whole, um, area like or like doing the whole state like how big is the radius um when they're generating those and is this a system that's for a team of people or was that for an individual you know what do you mean by that last question uh was it just one loan officer um that you're generating those kind of numbers for that loan officer or is this a combination of a branch okay so those numbers coming from a branch yeah so that's that's uh you know they are uh, lenders right i think it's like a mortgage the brokerage you know the firm mm -hmm. so they have a team of their own so we only That's gave them appointments whatever type of appointments that came in they could you know play around with that with their team so, you know the, the point where you are trying to go yes yeah okay. what type of loans are you, you know, usually you know you prefer or you know specialize in is there anything specific va fha um, um, I, so my book of business now i do majority conventional loans that has more to do about where i live um, mm -hmm. And like I said, it's a college town. Um, I really like working with first-time home buyers. Okay. Um, you know, I feel like if you're successful with them, and, and if you do it right, those are people you can have. Like you get, they, you get the best referrals from them. Um, you know, those are people that are not indebted to you, but like they feel like you know, like that's my guy. Um, so I like first-time home buyers. I do lots of conventional loans, um, but I am not. One of those people, uh, VA, which is, you know, I'm actually ex military, but I don't do a lot of VA, which is really weird. Um, but I don't, oh, wait, so. yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not, not exactly. But the part of why well, I guess I do know why is like, I don't go after, like, I don't market that niche. Um, I just market myself as a, a well rounded loan officer. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, I don't market to the, to those venture buyers. Um, but okay. I am a, I am a, I have, I have, I'm am certified as a, uh, veteran loan officers. Um, so I have a certification for that. So that's something that, you know, I'd be, if I could drum up that business more of that, that would be great. Um, but I don't want to be too scattered. You know, I think that it's going to work better if it's, if I say, okay, and, and I'm assuming that we can change this up. So if I say, Hey, I want to, I want to really target, uh, VA buyers. And then, you know, we try that for a couple months or whatever. And then I say, okay, I really want to target first time home buyers and we can change that up. I'm assuming, exactly. Right? Exactly. So yeah. the thing with this is like, you know, it's under your control and it brings predictability to your business. That's the you know yeah, yeah. essence of it. That's what we yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so I think I don't I didn't answer your question, but you're asking like what 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 could go wrong? I, I just having the amount of leads coming in, in in this certain area, like I don't know if the numbers will be the same here as they are in Michigan. So like how successful because you haven't I'm assuming you haven't did this in Virginia. No, we haven't done, and we only want yeah. one person to work within one single state, so that at least for now, 
so that we can, in case you want to customize more areas as well, we can go there, mm -hmm. right? Gotcha. It doesn't yeah. it be overlapping with someone else. Well, what is yeah. the population? So that's, that's my only thing. So what is the population uh, you, can you say that, you know, the type of people you're targeting, you want more of? What's the usual mm -hmm. population in the, in the Virginia uh, area, like Virginia, what, uh, West Virginia? Uh, so it's gonna, if you're looking at the whole state, it's gonna vary because you have like, uh, so the way the state is broken up is that you have, uh, what we call Northern Virginia. And so in Northern Virginia, it's like close to DC, the capital of the United States. And so it's a ton of people right there. So it is extremely dense there. Um, but not only is it dense with people, it's dense with loan officers. It's super competitive in that market. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if I want to be in that market. But then if you look at the rest of the state, it's, um, more rural. And so it's not as densely populated. And so I think that's where I almost want to concentrate my, my time because I don't think people are hitting those areas as hard as they should. Um, so okay. those areas, I, I don't know exactly what the population, like I can get that information for you if that's helpful. Um, but Northern Virginia, super dense. Um, put it this way. So politically in our state, you have, um, the Northern Virginia part of the state is, is land wise. It's not very big, but it controls the whole entire politics because there's so many people there okay okay i get it no anyways like you know inside the ads manager when we set things up we will have data about that as well but as long as it's like it's more than like five hundred thousand people we can target that's like the absolute best but we can also play yeah. with smaller numbers it's, it's more about specifying the message to the customer and go and go you know home buyer right mm -hmm. uh, more than how many we can target and this 1200 is about like you know a 12 month a 10 month period time and some months they spent more with us some months they spent less but it's also because they have a team structure in place which you don't need to get started with yet does it make sense yes okay so do you what do you what next steps do you want to take from here um, I mean, of course, you know, it's going to, part of it's going to come down to cost as well. Um, you have to figure out or anticipate what your ROI is going to be. Um, so whatever the spend is. So like, I understand you talked about the Facebook spend, but like your company, how do you guys get paid? What is, what do I can, what do I pay to you guys for the services you provide? Okay. That's a good question. So, uh, to get started, we need one set of fee, one time set of fee to set everything up for you, including the CRM and, you know, the funnels and uh, making sure the videos integrations and everything is there. That would be 297 one time. Plus you take care of the Facebook ads for the first month. In case we have a guarantee that if we don't get five applications in the next six weeks, but sometimes it takes two weeks extra. If you don't get in six weeks, then we will put down our own funds, uh, for the next 30 days or for the Facebook ads until you get those qualified appointment applications in, right? So it is a partnership that we are trying to build. We don't want to work with on one month or two months. We want to get into the goal that you are trying to achieve. So from our side, to start with, start where there's going to be 297 set of fee to get started. You take the Facebook ads. Once you see, okay, there is a positive ROI and we make sure that, okay, this is the numbers. This is how the numbers look like. Then we can, uh, we charge like thousand dollars per month for service fee to us to take care of everything with the ads and managing them, changing them every week, calling the people up, qualifying them, integrating the videos, post processing the videos, everything. But that's only once the ROI makes sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, yeah. And so if you're a thousand dollars spent, that's probably a little more than I wanted to, but like if it's producing, um, it's similar to what you're saying. If, if I'm bringing in five more deals for a month, that thousand dollars is well worth it. Um, so I'm, I'm just one of those individuals just the numbers have to make sense. And so if you're generating five more minimum at minimum, five more deals per month and close business, um, then yeah, that's, that sounds, that's it. That's a thousand dollars I'll spend every single month. Gladly. No, the, the thing is that one thing more I wanted to ask is like applications, right? What's the process there? There's difference between applications and pre-approvals and a closed loan. So what, what does it look like for you? How many applications do you, as you said, like, you know, 70 applications gets you 10 loans. So if you, if we have to make sure that your goal of five more month, you know, five more loans is hit, I think you need to get more six times what? 20, 20, 15, 20 applications more a month. Uh, yeah, 15 and 20 more applications, you know, you figure, uh, I guess it depends on how warm they are, but if you can close, I mean, Jeremy, if you can close 30, 30, 40% of those, then, you know, you're doing really good. Um, mm -hmm. so I think those are the numbers. So what, what I would get to is that because this first trial period is not to make sure that you get some, you know, loans closed, ideally one loan, at least I think we can get to that in the 30 period time, but it's more like to find out the ROI for the system for you in your area. 
Once we make sure that is in place, then we can increase the ad spend a bit more. Let's say like instead of 20 a day, we can go for 40 a day and still it would make sense in terms of the numbers that's coming in for you. Does it make sense? So that's what I'm saying. Do you have examples suggest. of the ads? Do you have examples of an ad? Um, I, right now I cannot pull that up because I don't run the ads myself. Manish does it. So I can mm-hmm. maybe like, you know, share details about it for, with you off of the call, but it's not the, it's the first top of the funnel, basically. Everything happens after that. That's the main real deal what I shared with you. Yeah, I was just wondering. So like, of course I saw, um, the, the survey that people fill out, but what drives them to the survey? Um, okay. I can show you maybe this one. Uh, let me check. Because I'm really not that tech, you know, I'm really not good at good with technical stuff. Let me just check it. <laughs> Have you ever had like, you know, conversations, uh, in depth conversations like this about this before? No. Um, no, I will have to, you know, ask Manish to share some information with you, but that's just, you know, I don't think that's going to be making a big difference in terms of you getting clarity about this. Is there anything specific that's coming to your mind that might, you know, that can make you help, help you make a decision on this about the ads? About the ads specific, um, when yeah. I'm thinking of the ads, um, and the reason I'm asking a question about seeing an ad is still is going, cause my understanding is the ads. Are they going to be branded to me? Okay. I get it. Yes. So we are going to be, we want you to, first of all, you know, share a video, video ads is what we use. So I want mm-hmm. you to share your video to us and we'll be taking your partial employee access of your ads account so that we can manage your account with your face on your behalf. Does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. And you just mentioned, so you would be in charge, you would take control over my business Facebook page. No, we'll not take control. You'll be the owner of it. You'll be the admin of no. it. You so have access, access to my business access. Account. Yes. Access. You will give us access on the onboarding. We'll guide you to that so that we can run only the ads on your behalf. Right. And so, yeah, that, and so it goes back. So if it's, you know, like if my personal brand, like, and I just want to have some control over the messaging. Um, that will be on because it's, because it's my personal brand that we are putting out there. So that's why I was asking the questions about the actual ads. What do the actual ads look like? What, um, things of that nature? Like, it, I understand that that's not what we're going after. Like, it's about getting people to go into yeah. the system and getting their information going from there. But like, still, it's still my personal brand and then I, I want to just see what it looks like. Exactly. So, you know, the, uh, starting from the ad. The Facebook business page is yours, so that's your branding. We want to make sure that your reputation is, you know, the messaging that you value. What's your value aspect, right? The USP that you stand for. That should be carried throughout the campaign. So it's not, it's not us. No one will know about us. It's going to be you to the market. And that, that way we can make sure the uh, result comes out. Okay. That's pretty much it. What do you want to do next? Um, you asked me if I want to move forward with, uh, signing a, an agreement. Yeah. That like, you know, that's the next step. Like what exactly do you want to do from here, from your point of view, from the experience shared, I shared with you the details we have discussed. What do you think is the best possible decision for you? Um, is there any way that I can get any of this and like the structure of it in writing? Do you guys have a packet that you can send out or something so I can review it and clear on it and think about it? I guess so here is that you, you, you're asking me for, I mean, of course you went over the system, but you're asking me for $297, which, um, I'm comfortable with that. Just so you know, um, you know, as far as doing that to get started. And then I'm also comfortable with the spin for the mm-hmm. Facebook ads to try it out. So I, we, we're, we're okay there. Um, but I would just like to know more about the CRM and I would like to see it. I, I guess there's not one detail that I want to see. I have a CRM. And I'm assuming that there would there be some duplication there, or I guess how they get to my CRM is through the application process. We're driving them through my application. And so then I get those people into my CRM. Anybody who's not filling out an application stays in your CRM anyway, because mm-hmm. I don't necessarily need them in my CRM. Okay. If, or okay. how does that work? Or do I, I get all of them into my CRM? How does that work? No. So that's a really valid question. I'm glad I'm. That's on me. I missed that part, but okay. So you see, right? So this is our CRM, but this is an account inside yes. our CRM. 
So we'll be uh, on the onboarding call. You will be getting an account set up for you, specific to you about this campaign. You will have access, login access to it as an admin. So you can look at these things, overview about what we are doing. But then once someone is like, just for example, then, right? What happens after scheduled deployment is we connect the, this to their Salesforce CRM. They have a Salesforce CRM, right? So from there, the scheduled deployment goes to their CRM, just like how you want them to be. So once so someone is your like, yeah. Sorry, do you have to have company access to that? How do you push it to the CRM? Oh, we can have, you know, Zapier, right? Do you Say know it again? Zapier. Zapier? No, I'm not familiar with Zapier. So it's like a uh, Zap thing, like we can connect the API, this API to your CRM. Right? Okay. So that way... Will I have to get permission from my company for that? Is that something where, will you be able to do that? Or do I have to go through compliance with my company in order to work with you? Hmm. Is it is it absolutely important for you to have the applications inside there? Yeah, I don't want to work out of two CRMs. So this is what I think. Uh, this is how it should be looking like. Because no need to complicate it. Because once you speak with someone, right, on the on the mm -hmm. call, like let's say consultation call, that's already on yeah. your side. And I think on a in a period of uh, thirty days, if you're getting five people or six people to submit applications to you, then you can just manually put them like how you usually do. In your CRM, so you don't need to have automations in place there. Everything backend that is already automated is going to be here, and you can now you know see it here. Okay. That's what I would say. Yep. And yeah. anything else that that you think yeah. I missed? No. No. Okay. Yeah. It's been helpful, um, but yeah, I would just, I guess. I would like to think on it. Um, there's, yeah, there's just some things. And I'm assuming that a lot more clarity comes out in the onboarding um, because you were talking about that thing you set up your Facebook as your, or your, your availability to my Facebook. Um, that's when you set up your CRM. That's when you uh, go over what your preferred client looks like. And so you can go exactly. in depth in that phone call. Okay. So we'll be having a, you know, strategy session there, a set, set up session and then strategy session there. So Manish mm -hmm. is going to be taking care of that, like from there on for you, strategize everything. And then he'll be able to show you, okay, this is the area that we're looking for. This is the audience members, number of audience population, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have that data when we're talking about, like when I, when I say, um, because I guess some of it is like I, I, when I talk to other people and they are the professionals in their business, um, is I want to have some say and some control on it, but I also want to know, um, okay, what value do you bring? Like, what is it that you can teach me or tell me or, you know, because like I don't know all. Um, and so even when we're looking at market areas, like you have data that I can look at and be like, I really think you should go after this market and this market and this market because it's, for me, it's not about, like I said, I want to stay. I want to do more business in my own market. I also want to do more business outside of my market. Mm -hmm. um, will you have data that I can look at and say, okay, I want to target here, or do you yes. target? You talked about five hundred thousand. How do we draw those lines of that five hundred thousand? Okay, so you know, in Facebook ads, when we start setting up the campaign, right? Or we can drop, you know, pin location pin to a specific radius. That okay, in this from this center point, we can mark 10, 10 kilometer radius or five mile radius, right? So mm -hmm. you can tell us, okay, these are the pin codes. If you can give us pin codes list, that's going to be, you know, zip codes, right? Uh, that's going to be okay. even more valuable. So we can just okay. enter the list of the zip codes and that you already know that this is the area that you want to target and it's going to be the top of the funnel. Okay. That's pretty much it. All right. Okay. All right. I mean, the, from our side, like, there is not much that we can do right now. The only the next step would be if you want, want to, if you have even a like 50% chance of moving forward, then I can set up the onboarding call right now, send the details after this call, uh, you know, an email, and also if possible, a video recording with all the briefing, what we have discussed here, and then you can, you know, uh, we can move forward. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm comfortable enough to do that. Okay. Cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Then I'll send you the email. Um, uh, do you need any, uh, Agreement or something like that, contract signing or something, or? Um, no, I do have to, I uh, just, you know, to keep myself, um, you know, in compliance with my company, I don't think it's going to be an issue because it's not something I'm asking my company to spend. We're not going to be advertising. So will it be me that we're advertising or will it be Sean Allen of Movement Mortgage? It's going to be Sean Allen. Your, your okay. Facebook page, what does it say? Uh, I think it does. Well, it just, it's Sean Allen. 
But of course, it listed, you know, my MLS number and all that stuff in my company. So they're just really big on compliance. And so, like, I just have to check with them and make sure that I'm going to be in compliance or is there anything that they need uh, if I do this? Okay. I mean, so, you know, from what we have seen is, like, this process that I've shared with you doesn't require any, you know, compliance from that side because we're not involving them at all. There's nothing that we are involving them. Apart from the fact that when you are in a consultation call with them, with the home buyers, that's when the company comes into play as well, right? Uh, otherwise, it's just on the back end, 80% is you yeah. and 20% is the name associate. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we should find because, like, I've done a Zillow um, contract before and I didn't run that through compliance. Like, I didn't need to. Like, it's it's all set up. So, I would assume it's very similar. Very um, similar. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, I've done that before. I, I'm assuming that's how it's going to be. I just want to make sure. Okay, cool. So do you want to you know, uh, book the onboarding call as well right now? or how do you I do. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. What time works best for you? Maybe day after tomorrow, let's say. Let's have one day buffer time. Let me check this. Yeah. Now that's, uh, oh, by the way, it's 19th, right? Or Monday, right? For you? Yes. So Wednesday. Wednesday, apart from 9 a.m. Pacific, what's the time zone? It's Virginia, right? So... Central? Yeah, Eastern Standard Time. Eastern. Eastern. Okay, so. That's like 10. Yeah, so my, my morning is already booked up on Wednesday. It would have to be in the, towards the evening. And I don't know what time you guys were 12 hours difference. What is the difference? It's, it's 11, yeah, almost 11 and a half. Okay. Yeah, so well, I don't have anything into the evening on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday. Um, I have something at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time already. Um, so we can either do how long does the call take? It's gonna take at least like you know 60 minutes, a um, minute, both the strategy session and the setup. 60 to 90 minutes, I would say. So in all honesty, Friday works. If, if that's the case, if it's if it's easier in the mornings, um, Friday yes, the, be the, for for the Eastern Time we work until like you know uh 2 30. PM Eastern. Okay, two thirty. No, no. Wait, just give me a minute. Two thirty. That's like yeah, three thirty until three thirty. So last time we can you know is like two PM is the last that I can do. Two PM is the last one you can do. Yeah. So anything before that would be fine. Uh. Okay. So I mean, I have two would be Wednesday is that would be the earliest that I could do on Wednesday. Thursday, um, I can do earlier on Thursday. I can do noon. Twelve noon Thursday. Yeah, that'll be good. Let's check. Twelve minutes. Okay. Um. Yeah. Twelve noon. Uh. Thursday, right? Yeah, the twenty second. Twenty second. Yes. So twelve noon Thursday, twenty second. Let's let's do that at uh twelve noon, right? Okay. I can confirm the time. Send you confirmation after this call, and then we'll send. Okay. Perfect. All right then. Uh. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you go then now. Anything else coming up today after this? Yeah, I just got to head to the office and get some stuff done. I hope they get done here soon. Yeah, that was that was a really nice conversation, Sean. I'm looking forward to the onboarding call and let's see if there's something that comes up. Let me know. Okay, sounds good. Sure. Have a good day. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye-bye.